down. Let's pick up where we left off. So on the ends of your bones, you have cartilage. And it's a form of cartilage, which you already know is called hyaline cartilage and such, by the way it looks and such. Uh, and these, this cartilage actually forms part of the synovial joint. The synovial joints are types of joints that allow a type of movement, free-ranging motion and movement as such at the ends of the bones and such. Uh, <clears throat> bones are composed of osteons. Uh, like I've mentioned earlier, the other, the older name is her Haversian systems and such. Uh, they are usually the, these osteons are running in the parallel arrangement to the long axis of the bone. They don't go perpendicular. They go with the long shaft and such. At the center of each is this canal, this osteonic canal. You can read there, they call it a Herbergian canal. And that's what the blood vessels and the nerves travel through. Uh, the cells are located in lacuna, which we already saw. And then reaching out or branching out between these spaces are little bitty canals. That's the canaliculi. And it's through this that the osteocytes will extend their cell membranes and, and touch the next one through a gap junction. And then that's how the nutrients and the waste are pushed or moved through the bone. Bone is a living tissue. It's a very, uh, uh, it's very, it's, it's very much alive. So all I can tell you on that. So the lacuni, if you look at them, they're in layers. And a layer, a fancy word for layer is lamellae. So you have these uh, concentric or circular, and then you have these other types of lamellae and such. Uh, so you do have in between the circles, you have the remnants of older uh, osteons, and those are known as interstitial lamellae. So uh, it just, it's their space fillers, if you will. But they have living cells in them, and, and uh, nutrients get to them and all. Even though they might be cut off from a, their blood supply, they're still getting it from the closest, the nearest uh, osteon. So there's a nice picture of it, and you can see the osteon right there. They call it Herbergian. And you can see there's one, two, three, four right here. And then in the center, there's the remnants of previous ones because the bone remodels, and that's known as the interstitial. Uh, connecting central canals to central canals or these perforating canals. That's well, how we call them in the lab. The older name for those is the Volkmann's, Volkmann's canals and such. But that's what you learn is a perforating canal. So now, how are bones produced? And I hinted at this in the previous uh, video. Two ways, whether in between membranes or whether you have a cartilage model. There's two ways, two, two methods of this and such. Uh, either how, either, either way that you make it, they still, the bone will remodel and such so that all bone tissue looks like bone tissue. So this intramembranous ossification, it is between the membranes the bones are formed. That's what that means. So when you find certain uh, bones like in the, uh, the flat bones of the cranium, they are formed through this intramembranous ossification. Think of it like a pillowcase. And so keep that, uh, that analogy. It's a pillowcase. The pillowcase is the membranes and such. And as the embryo is becoming a fetus as it's going through these uh, changes about eight weeks in certain cells uh, these these mesenchymal cells they get together they aggregate and then they become they differentiate they they specialize into bone forming cells and they're kind of in the in the uh in the the uh, pillowcase and such and so they're all inside there and they start secreting the organic parts of the bone, the fibers and such. And then they also start laying down the inorganic matrix and such. And so they start forming all of that. And as they're doing this, they're forming these spikes. And we earlier I showed them, they call them spicules or spikes. Uh, and we call them tuberculae. But these spikes, it's basically a capillary and then bone grows around that capillary. And such so that's kind of what's happening then you have these little spikes reaching out with that and then you get the inorganic material laid down around that and it forms the actual needle-like structure or spicule so you got your pillowcase 
and in the center that's what's happening these little spikes are all kind of growing in all these different directions and then they get the bone laid down and get these spicules and such and then uh, it fills in the middle of the pillowcase nice and flat and on the outside the actual uh, the, the material that's the membrane and then you get next to another pillowcase and where the two meet that's this fibrous joint that's known as the suture uh, in a newborn you call it the fontanelle because these plates these joints and these plates and such they are not fused they have to be able to move so that the baby's skull can mold so that it can pass through the birth canal so so uh, <clears throat> but that's how you get a flat bone and then later around the edge it'll remodel and become compact bone and then in the center the flat part of the center it will be a spongy bone so the other way that bones grow and this is more of your uh, axial or your appendicular really your appendicular your, your long bones and such is through this endochondral ossification and this is where you have a hyaline cartilage model so early on as this embryo then becomes this fetus and such your bones uh, they're not bones but they're cartilage that you get a cartilaginous skeleton and these are little bitty uh, models of what the bones will be and all so that's early on uh, <clears throat> As you go from 12 weeks, 13 weeks, 15 weeks, around and like that, around that cartilaginous model, you will get a periosteum form along the shaft, and that's known as the bone collar. Then, uh, when that happens right here, it kind of cuts the nutrients off, and you get these cells in the center. They kind of start to become these bone cells. And what will happen is you have to get blood to them. So you get a, a blood vessel that moves in right there. And then that becomes this primary ossification center. That blood brings in nutrients. And the nutrients cause these uh, cartilaginous cells in the center right here to grow really, really fast. And then they rupture. And when they rupture, they spill their cytoplasmic material into the space, which then eats away or gobbles up the cartilage and all and then that creates the cavity so as the blood goes in those cells grow faster so you get this lengthening of the bone and as that happens then they die and then uh, you get the removal of the cartilage and then you get the replacement by bone so the cartilage gets replaced by the bone and such in there you need a good blood supply to do that now you're born most of your long bones and such they're they're bony now they, you do have a few of your bones that are still just cartilaginous bones uh, the ends of the bones are still just cartilage you then get an incursion or you get this uh, uh, blood vessels moving into the ends into the distal ends and the proximal ends and such and the same process takes place as the blood brings in the nutrients it causes this hypertrophic growth of the cartilaginous cells which then they die spilling their guts uh, eating away the bone cells move in and you get it replaced by bones and then you get these secondary ossification centers on the proximal and distal ends those continue to form bone so that a little bit later on you notice that you have the diaphysis then you come up and you have this this growth plate known as an epiphyseal plate that's found at the epiphysis, epiphysis of the bone then you have the spongy bone in the ends right here and then it's capped with this articular cartilage this articular cartilage and epiphyseal plate are the remnants of that bony model that was formed early on in your uh, formation so now the bone gets remodeled and such and the cartilage changes a little bit you know, but why do you have a hyaline cartilage at the ends of your bones? Because that was what your skeleton began as early on and such. A primary is where it begins into the shaft, and the secondaries are when it goes into the ends. 
uh, these ends of these bones and such they mature at different times and all so 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 it's best exemplified in the long bones these mesenchymal cells they get together they aggregate then they become chondroblast and they produce this cartilage uh, uh, precursor this cartilage skeleton and such then about eight weeks in in the mid region of that bone they start to change into these bony cells and then they get a, uh, uh, a bony collar formed around them by when the periosteum develops and then a blood vessel moves into that and starts bringing them uh, nutrients causes the cartilage cells to grow really really fast which then causes them to spill their guts and it, it actually changes the pH of the area and it chews up some and it causes the calcium to precipitate and turn into the uh, the hard matrix so so that then uh, when the cartilaginous cells also when they start to die and break down that kind of helps create the cavity the uh, medullary cavity that's found in the long bones so but the cartilage its growth and its death uh, triggers the laying down of the bone the, the, the hardening the ossification and such and then it gets remodeled into uh, uh, bone as we know it and such so so by the third month of development, you get the bud right in there. And it gets the uh, blood supply going into it. And then at birth, you have that collar of uh, this cortex or cortical bone along the shaft. You still have the ends, and those are your secondary ossification centers along the epiphysis of the bones and all. And they have a uh, blood supply that goes to them. And the proximal end, uh, it starts forming at or near birth. And then it continues, you continue to grow in your proximal ends until you're about 18 or 19. And that growth plate should close. On the distal, the distal end of the bone, it kind of starts its ossification at about one to one and a half. So was that 18 months, 12 to 18 months? And it goes until your early 20s and then it closes and such. So, so your proximal closes before your distal. Remember, you grow your bone grows at its ends. So uh, now you really shouldn't be trying to walk or move around until that happens. So uh, little children should not be encouraged to walk or forced to walk until that has happened. And from 12 to 18 months, that's a big difference in a lot of kids. So not every kid is going to start at 12 months. Not every kid is going to start at uh, 18 months. And I don't know if people want to brag their kids are walking at two months. Don't let them do that. So make them crawl. Leave them. Let them. Let them alone. So, uh, so really, what's left uh, of this uh, uh, hyaline cartilage is the ends and such, the the articular surfaces, and then really the only the remaining cartilage is this plate. After this happened, right, this plate right in here, and then when the plate ossifies the bone has stopped its growth and that's when you can say that is now an adult bone so all right we'll stop right there